We'll start in verse 4. And the, and the third angel poured out his bowl, poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, Righteous art thou who art and who wast, O holy one, because thou did judge these things. For they, they represent those of the first beast, that that false religion. It says, for they poured out the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. They deserve it. See, here's what the text, which is very important for us to see. says, they poured out the blood of the saints and the prophets. Okay, now, we know that this religion cannot arise in this period of time. Why? Because the saints have been raptured. We're not going to be in existence. Okay, so we know the, re- the religion has to arise prior to the rapture because it says that saints' blood are martyred, that they have been martyred. And so, and so the saints, this, this particular religion has martyred Christians, and they have martyred Christians because they're Christian. So we know it has to precede this period of time. It also says the blood of martyrs, it says the blood of, of prophets and of saints, okay? The saints represents Jesus Christ. So who do the prophets represent? The Jews. This religion is before the tribulation. It exists. It exists right now. It ex- it's not a future religion. It exists right now. Because it has committed martyrdom, it has committed murder of saints and Jews. And we're gone at the three and a half year point. Okay, go back to um, Revelations 13. I need to show you something. Okay, well, I need you to look at verse 7. And before I read it, I need, I need, to, I need to tell you something. Um, it took me years before I finally submitted to the literal word, words of Revelation chapter 13, verses 7 and 8. It took me years. Because I didn't want to believe it. Here's what it says. And it was given to him, that would be the first beast, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. You want me to read that again? And it was given to him, that is, the, the first beast, that is, the head of this false religion, who makes war with the saints. It was given to him to make war with the saints and to what? Overcome them. Well, here's what I did. You know, I said, well, you know, this war must have occurred somewhere back here. You know, maybe, I don't know, 3rd century, 4th century, 5th century, 6th century, 7th century, must have already occurred. Well, it, it can't be a future event. I mean, after all, we are saved from the wrath of God. So how could it possibly be that Revelation 13 verse 7 is saying that the war that is being waged is a future war. I would not believe it. And so what, it's like what I did was, I, what I did was I said, it's got to be up here. It can't be talking about now. But then I came to understand something. The wrath of God is the last three and a half year period of time. The wrath of Satan is the first three and a half year period of time and also the preceding years. The entire period of time preceding the rapture is the wrath of of Satan. And what is the text saying? It says that the saints will be overcome. Why? Because of the wrath of Satan. It also says, it also says, verse 5, and there was given to him, that is the first beast, it was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words with blasphemies and authority to act for 42 months was given to him. Notice, how long a period of time is three and a half years? 42 months. You know what the text is telling us? This false religion will overcome the saints for 42 months. Just so happens that that is 42 months, the first three and a half years of the seven-year period of tribulation. 
That's what he's saying. We say, wait a minute, Pastor Kip. I mean, you know, what you're saying that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what the scripture says. That the saints, Christians, will be overcome by this false religion. We say, well, maybe you're just reading it out of context. Show me another passage. Okay, go to Daniel 7. Let's start in verse 19. Okay, Daniel 7 is a passage that has those four beasts that I was telling you about earlier. Okay? The fourth one is the one that represents the same beast that Revelation 13 is talking about. Okay? It's the beast of the last days. Look at verse number um, 19. Then I desired to know, says Daniel, the exact meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others. Well, you know why it's different? I'll tell you why it's different, because all the others, the preceding three beasts, were all political kingdoms. This one is not a political kingdom. This is a spiritual kingdom. This is a religious kingdom that is going to wage this war. I desire to know the exact meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its, uh, and its claws of bronze, and which devoured, crushed, and trampled down the remainder with its feet, and the meaning of the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, and before which three of them fell, namely that horn which had eyes and a mouth uttering great be boast, and which was larger in appearance than its, than its associates. I could talk another hour about those two chapters, those two verses, but we don't have time. So verse 21, that's the key verse. I kept looking. He's going into the future. I kept looking. That's what the text is saying. I kept looking. There's something down the road that's coming. I kept looking. And that horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them. Same thing. Exact same thing. And overpowering them until the Ancient of Days came. Okay, when's the Ancient of Days coming? The Ancient of Days, here's our problem. And if, <sighs> that verse almost causes us to change the date of this and move it to here. But we're going to take the view that it's really not doing that, okay? We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to take the view that it's right there because it says that they overpowered them until the Ancient of Days came, all right? We could read, we could interpret that to say this is that time, the second coming of Jesus Christ, but we're not going to do that. Verse 22, until the Ancient of Days coming came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one, and the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. That's the millennium, millennial kingdom of Jesus Christ. Here's what the text is telling us. Is that, is that um, oh, goodness, I can't talk about that now. Okay. Okay, look at verse 25. And he will speak out against the Most High, and wear down the saints of the highest one. He will intend to make alterations in times and in law, and they will be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. How long is that? Three and a half years. A time is one year, a times is two, and half a time is three and a half years. Revelation 13 said 42 months. It's the same period right there that the saints are given into the hands of the beast. Verse 